technology has allowed unprecedented collaboration among workers and students. In fact, collaboration is a key component to 21st century learning. However, the state of Texas measures students on individual performance, colleges use grade point averages as part of their acceptance criteria, and American ideals promote rugged individualism. Therefore, individual work and performance is valued as much, if not more, than collaboration. Within this paradox, education communities have grayed the lines between collaboration and academic honesty. Do students understand the difference of collaboration and academic dishonesty? Do parents have an understanding of this paradox? What are the costs associated when students go beyond collaboration? At a high school in Central Texas, we asked students, parents, teachers, and administrators these questions and more in an attempt to clarify the spirit of collaboration. So what is the value of collaborative learning? Collaborative learning is the ability to get more thoughts, more diversity into the idea, kind of to uh, better solve a problem. Uh, and it, it gives us the opportunity to have multiple people look at the same thing, bring their ideas to the table, let's discuss them, and let's take the best parts of all of them. I'm kind of lazy, and then my friends, when they're smart, they can do a lot of work too. But I also, you know, get to see things from the point of view of my friends. I hate collaborating because 90% of the time I end up taking charge of the whole thing because no one else has the initiative, or I end up being stuck with people who I can't follow or understand. You get all these different lenses from different people, and so where you might have had one idea, there could be a million more. Have you been a part of or witnessed a time when your colleagues have, got, have gone beyond collaboration? A lot of times. A lot of times? Yeah. What's the, basically just those basic, what is the, what, what are we doing today in English, science, or whatever? Uh -huh. Uh, or how hard is the test, quiz, what, are, what is the main thing you need to know? I mean, there's definitely like, you know, talking about how hard a test was or what kind of test it is, whether it was multiple choice. And, and it, a lot of times it's because they don't know the difference. They don't know, uh, you know, wh wh which worth the line. And, and a lot of times it's because they're, some are a little more aggressive and want to help a little more and therefore feel that that's a way to become part of the group. Become kind of the norm kind of start making excuses because everyone else does that that's the obvious one but i think you know maybe the question you could say is when when does that happen um and a lot of times you know you, you have to wonder like well was, was it just a mistake good intention bad intention probably you could say it would be when when there's not a clear line set so so when when do they cross over between uh, collaboration or cheating I think other times it's just maybe a lack of respect either for the subject or the uh, you know the lesson itself or even just for learning. Sometimes we have very object oriented people and they say let's hurry up and just get, the, get it done. And again thinking of it as a project. Just get it done rather than the process. How has technology facilitated both good and bad aspects of collaboration? It facilitates the bad aspects by again going back to cheating and I think as educators um, I'm always kind of paranoid about that. You know, we're going to have cheating. It, make, it makes it easier for the students to do. Uh, it makes it harder for the teachers to, to catch. You know, so there's the texting underneath the, the, the desk that people are always worried about. And, you know, now it's things like cameras can be in your watch and your glasses, wherever. Uh, and, and so, so it, those are all the things that you can't ever see or it's difficult to see. And then there's all the technology outside where, you know, you have people posting answers on Facebook. And, and it just goes everywhere instead of just being a small group, then now the whole school's involved. Technology has definitely made it easier in order to communicate, send pictures, video chat. Well, the, the, the good is it, it's really provided us so many more options. I mean, I, I, if I wanted to you know, collaborate about Ukraine today, for example, one of the best things to do is I, I get on the newspaper. You know, I, I'd be able to get on and, and find out what, what are the Ukrainian people thinking about what's going on versus just what are we thinking. I think this is absolutely fantastic. Skype. These kids get on Skype and they work stuff out. And it's phenomenal. You can memorize something for a test, but if you, don't, if you don't actually take the note yourself and you think about it for a while, then you don't remember it for very long. What is the cost to society of students or colleagues going beyond collaboration?
And I think there's a cost to the individual, and then it'll expand to, to society. I think the individual, we get lazy. It becomes our crutch. We start depending on it, and we start taking shortcuts. When we gather information, we create new ideas instead of just taking information and passing it on. Sometimes some people may be rewarded unfairly, whereas other people may find that to be completely unfair for them. And uh, at the same time, maybe someone who managed to make their way through life with out actually doing the work gets promoted to a high position and finally when that responsibility gets put on them they don't have the ability to meet that responsibility and then problems happen. Overall it's just a symptom, it's overall breakdown, a moral breakdown of society, the loss of moral values. I feel like it's just a detriment to themselves although they may not suffer any consequences now in middle school or high school it will cost them later on in life. Collaboration is a process and how we get to a certain solution but it's not us giving, it's us being participants. The worst thing, I think, is that loss of community, the sense of trust between the student and the teacher, um, between the students themselves, and, and that sense of paranoia, because you're wondering, like, are they cheating? Who's cheating? What's going on? I can't trust this person. I can't trust that grade. I can't trust an excuse anymore. And that community, I just, you know, that's the thing I get sentimental about. I think that, you know, to co when you collaborate, there's a sense of togetherness. Uh, that, that you're, you're working towards something, you're working together. Uh, when it tips over, you're obviously working to um, go, I, I can't think of it, but, but you're working to, to uh, take. You're, it, it's an us against them mentality. That's when collaboration tips over, when, when you get that sort of opposition involved in it. But collaboration, everybody's sharing, and it's very friendly looking like this. While the students, administrators, parents, and teachers all acknowledge the advantages of collaboration in that it brings multiple perspectives and can increase productivity of learning, this skill also introduces inequalities and opportunity. The cost of society of going beyond collaboration discussed by many of the participants included developing a codependent community that values completion over knowledge a society that cares little about the process of learning, but about a grade, is motivated from the outside, not from within, a community that slowly slides to mediocrity. There may not be a simple solution to stop people from going too far, but a good start might be to have an ongoing dialogue continually reviewing and reshaping the morality of what is acceptable and what is beyond.